fine so we will be studying about test ng right now okay what test ng does okay it acts like a centralized controller fine when you have got multiple test cases to execute fine suppose you make your test cases in selenium web driver okay you have to execute them in a particular serial order one after another right then you need to uh, fail or pass a test case right you need to uh, generate reports right then you need to read data from excel or parameterized test case you need to generate logs you need to take screenshots of the errors right so test ng acts like a centralized controller out here fine it reads the data from the excel file calls the test cases in a certain order right it helps you generate the reports logs screenshots everything fine okay so uh, selenium will not help you to generate reports there is nothing in selenium which will help you to generate reports parameterize your test cases and all right it is test ng which is going to do it fine and for that you need to first install test ng as a plugin inside eclipse fine you need to install test ng as a plugin inside eclipse for that for installing test ng as a plugin you need to go to google and type in google test ng eclipse fine and go to the first link click on install the plugin link right and yeah for eclipse 3.4 and above i guess everybody will have eclipse 3.4 or above right you need to take this link copy it fine I'll give you the link on Skype as well. Right. And uh, go to help install new software. Paste the link, hit the enter button. Do hit the enter button of the keyboard. Okay, after that you will see test ng coming up over here. Select it, keep on clicking next next next. In between your Eclipse will also restart and test ng will be installed inside Eclipse as a plugin you can verify that by going to window right and hold on show view other right in other under java you will have test ng present okay so under java you will have test ng present that means test ng has been successfully installed as a plugin inside eclipse fine okay now how is test ng used let us see that fine i'll make a new java project okay known as day 13 underscore test ng fine and out here inside the source folder suppose I make a new package okay right a package is a folder inside a folder like test cases package is inside the source folder so it's like a folder inside a folder right so you can build your test cases in this test cases package right suppose I make a new class known as say test a just making a dummy test case okay now how do you build a test case it is with the help of annotations 
In test ng you have got annotations and with the help of annotations you build the test cases. For example, I write the annotation at the rate test public void say do login. This is a simple login scenario. Okay, at the rate test means that this function will act like a test case. This is known as an annotation. Okay, if you move your mouse over this error, you will have the option to add the test ng library to the project. Okay, select the option. As soon as you select the option, you will see that on the in the project test ng over here will be added as a library inside it. There will be nothing but a jar file for test ng. Again, move your mouse and import the annotation. You will have the import option, right? Import the test annotation. Okay, now out here you can write system.out.println say do login test and then you can run this test case. You can right click on the test and select run as test ng test. So when you run it in Eclipse, right, or you can click on the run button on the top and I run it. In the console, you will get the output like this. It will be printed do login test because you have printed it and you will have a small report that is there were one test cases executed, zero were failures and zero were skipped. Okay. Right. Fine. So that I just explained you, right? You need to install it as a plugin inside Eclipse using this URL. Okay, you need to go to help install new software inside Eclipse and install it from here. Okay, right, you need to put the URL over here, select testng and install it. That's it. Right, so you need to. Just a minute. Yeah. So the, the, you 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 get the small report over here. Apart from this, you will have a section over here, uh, results of running the test, the the class test A. If you click on this, you will have the results <coughs> coming up like this. Okay. You, the do, do login will be selected. That means it's passing. All right. Okay. Now. You can have multiple test cases as well, right? You can write at the rate test public void say do password change. Inside it, you can write changing password, okay? Then you can have the third test case inside the same file public public void do logout. Okay, in this you can write over here system dot out dot print ln logging out. So when you run this code, fine, it will run three test cases. All right, in the results, you will see the three test cases being passed over here. Okay, in the console, you will be seeing do login test, logging out and password change printing. Look, the order is not correct. Everything goes by what we decided okay we decided to execute three test cases right three got executed right but first login got executed then logout and then password change but the order which we expected was in the order in which we have written the test cases from top to bottom okay 
Look, uh, order, you cannot say that order will remain the same in test ng. Don't think that the test cases which are written first will be executed first and the ones which are written after the first one will be executed afterwards. No, it's not going to happen like that. Okay, right, it will never happen like that. You have to give the order, you have to give the priority to the test cases. You need to write like this that this test case has got priority equals to 1. Then this test case has got priority 2 and this test case has got priority 3. Okay, and when you run this now, you will see that they execute in the order. So giving the priority to the test cases actually help you set the order in which the test cases will be executed. Okay? Right? Fine. Now, you can do the validations as well in the test cases. Right? For example, I'll just create a new class known as test B. Okay. And in this, suppose I write it at the rate test annotation. Okay, public void say test B is my test case. Fine. Okay, import the test annotation. Right. And over here, I want to do some validation. What is validation? We have some expected and actual value. When we compare the expected and actual value, we test the thing, right? Suppose we have the expected value, which we will generally keep in, say, Excel file or properties file. Okay, so say expected value is A, right? And actual value, actual value, we'll get it from Selenium, right? From the application. Say it is also A. If both the values they match, then I want to pass this test case. So over here, we use assertions. There is a class known as assert. If you write assert dot, you will get a lot of functions. Fine. Okay. See, so I write assert dot assert equals. Right. These are all static functions. They can be directly called by the name of the class assert. Fine. And please make sure you use the assert class from, hold on, you use assert class from the test ng, don't use assert class from junit. Okay, on the top when you write assert dot assert equals, Assert class should be imported from test ng. Sometimes people by mistake import it from JUnit and then they go get into issues. Right? JUnit is another testing framework like test ng. Okay. So you need to assert equals the actual and the expected value. So you keep both of them over here. Right. So when you run the test case, this test B, right, you will get the output. Runs are 1, failures are 0. Okay, because both the expected and the actual values, they match. If I write over here B, now both of them don't match. Both the values, they don't match. And if I run it, this will fail the test case. Failures are 1. In the results also, you will see the failure coming up. Okay. What is the difference between JUnit and TestNG? Look, uh, there are technically there are many differences, okay. But the motive for both of them is same. They help you build test cases, generate reports, and all everything. Okay, TestNG has, is more richer in functionality than JUnit and easier to understand. Okay, right. You can watch the video number eight. It has JUnit. You will come to know about it. Okay, it's not a big deal. When you 
watch test ng when you watch j unit after watching test ng it will not be a difficult thing okay both are same in j unit also we have got annotations like to add the ray test only okay we have got a cert class over there also all right but technically there are few differences the motive for both the frameworks is the same fine why i prefer using test ng because it's got rich it's, it's richer in functionality it uh, actually is more easier to use with selenium grid that is one of the major things right when you use selenium grid to run the test cases parallelly test ng helps a lot right rather all the documentation of the grid also if you see on the selenium website it is given with test ng <coughs> okay fine so this is assertions assertions will help you compare the actual and the expected value fine similarly there is another type of assertion assert dot assert true okay over here you have to give some condition and a message now how does it work right hold on if i write 2 greater than 3 and if i write over here some error message you can give a condition over here say i have written 12 greater than 3 if this condition evaluates to true then there will be no error assertion will be passing i am asserting true asserting true assert true means that the condition over here it should be true okay if i run this then there is no error the test will pass but if i write 12 greater than 13 okay and if i run this the test fails and in the error message you will see some error message coming up in the in in the results right okay now the question arises that when do we use this kind of an assertion okay in which scenarios we use this kind of an assertion right well we do use this assertion fine suppose remember the function is element present we had made this function which will detect the presence of the element and you will send the x path expression of the element inside that function you can call it over here if this function returns you false that means the element is actually not present on the web page okay and you can throw the error message that element not found I hope you are able to relate it. We'll be doing it in the frameworks as well. Okay, so there are lots of scenarios where this can be used. Now another thing is another type of assertion. The third type is you can directly fail the test case. assert dot fail will directly fail the test case with the given error message look sometimes you are very sure you reach a point in the test where you are very sure that fine out here you have to definitely fail the test case so you can simply write assert dot fail and this will also fail the test case okay right i hope you understood my point fine now this was about assertions okay and in the previous example i talked about executing the tests with a certain priority okay fine now in test ng you have got 
annotations other annotations which can actually help you uh, execute some code before or after executing the test for example let's take example of this test b itself there is a very good annotation known as at the rate before test and there is another annotation at the rate after test you can associate the functions with it okay right now sometimes you want to do some things before executing the test and after executing the test for example before executing you want to open browser and after executing you want to close the browser okay right so you can write the code to open the browser in before annotation test before annotation right and i'll just print at the rate before annotation over here before test annotation and over here <coughs> i will just write after test when i run this and over here i'll just write in the test case So when I run this, if you see the output, okay, you see the output. Before test is executed first, then it prints that it is inside the test B, and after test is executed after that. So before test will also uh, this annotation will always execute before executing the test. After test annotation will always execute after executing the test. and at the rate test annotation will execute the test case these are quite important right because sometimes you know you need to definitely close the browser after the test case and also you can work we can put those things out here right fine now sometimes there is a requirement that you have to execute a single test multiple times with different uh, sets of data okay for example i'll make a new class known as test c fine and you will write over here at the rate test say public void login test this is a very simple login test right now suppose i want to run this login test with different sets of usernames and passwords okay i want to run it with different sets of data all right so what we do in test ng is that we keep a two dimensional array for the data like this <clears throat> this is a two dimensional array right in this you have got cells right you have got rows and columns all right the number of rows you have actually determine the number of times you want to run the test and number of columns you have they determine the number of parameters you have in the test okay right so for example like this cell over here the position of this cell would be the third row two comma the first column and you can keep some data inside it okay so this is 00 0 through 0 column All right. So number of rows they determine the number of times you want to run the test, and number of columns they say that the number of parameters in the test case. Okay. And what we do is that in test ng we have an annotation known as 
data provider okay this annotation returns you a two dimensional object array having the data you can make this two dimensional object array over here with some rows i'll say that three rows or two rows and three columns two rows means that i want to run the test case two times and three columns means that every iteration has got three sets of data right for example i'll fill up my first row over here i'll write data 0 0 is say some username user1 then password and then say browser on which I want to run the test case so this is my first row okay I'll just put Mozilla fine and then you can pull up the val put up the values in second row as well you can put one out here username 2 password 2 and Chrome okay this is the second row of data you can write over here return data every row has got three parameters three columns are there okay right fine now you need to link this test with this data provider you need to tell the test that the data provider is equal to get data that is the get data method is giving you the data for this particular test case and please note the last thing and the very important thing okay the number of input parameters in this test case should be equal to number of columns you have okay number of columns should be equal to number of input parameters in the test you have got three columns so you'll have three parameters string username string password and string browser okay you will have three parameters in this test case and that's it if I run this test ng will see that fine this is the test case which I have to execute it will see that fine the data for this test is coming from this particular function get data it will go in the get data function then call the test with this data first and then it will call with this data first that's it when you run it you will see that test executes two times okay I'll again run it and it executes two times so you can have three sets of data you can have another row okay you can write the third row as well okay and when you run it it will now execute three times and you see that later on we will keep the logic over here which will actually read this data from an excel file rather than putting the data inside the test case we will read the data from the excel file and we will put it in the two dimensional object array okay right so to summarize what I did in the first test A I created three test cases 
and I told you you can execute, you can run them, but the order to make the order same, you will have to give them the priority. Okay, right. In the second test B, right, I had this. Uh, just a minute, guys. Yeah, in the second test B, I explained you that in the at the rate test function we can put up some validations as well you can put some validations in the test with the help of assertions and i told you that there are three types of assertion functions which you can use one is assert equals one is assert true right and one is fail which will directly fail the test case in test C, I told you that you can have a test case and you can link a data provider with the test case. This data provider will have a two-dimensional object array with which the data will be provided to the test case. Fine. And now I will tell you how you can batch run all the three tests. Okay, you can execute all the three tests together. Okay. Uh, well, it's quite easy. Mm, hold on. I'll tell you. You need to use this file known as just a minute. Test ng.xml. I'll keep this file in this project. This is an XML file in which you can keep your test cases. For example, the first test is test case A right the class for this test case is test cases package dot test A make sure you give this correctly out here you can give any test name XYZ or anything okay right but out here you need to give the correct name so then you have got test B and it's present in test cases dot test b package okay and out here you can write that test case c and you can keep it in test c package okay and you right click on test ng.xml and say run as test ng suite and you have this see that total test cases are seven which executed one got failed right you need to right click on test ng.xml and run as test suite okay right in the results of running the test you will see all the test cases coming up first test a then test b and then test c all right i didn't create it i used an existing one if you want to create it you just have to write everything from beginning but there are various test tags in this test ng.xml the one which is on the top the that test case will be executed first then one at the bottom and that that's how the tests are executed serially as written in this file if i write my test c at the top in this file fine and i run the test suite you will see that in the results test case C is executed first then test A and then test B okay so test ng.xml does nothing it's a file which holds the information about all the test cases and their execution that in the order in which they want to ex you want to execute them it helps you in batch running the test case this is similar to batch runner in QTP if you know QTP there is something known as batch runner 
I copy pasted it. I copied it and then right click and paste it in the project. That's it. I copied it from another project of mine. Okay. Right. So this is about test ng. Right. It's got nothing to do with Selenium. It's a unit testing framework. It is also used by unit testers, right? It's not that test ng is specifically made for Selenium. Fine. It is that that since it is available, it can be used with Selenium. It's not for Selenium. It's for many other things, and we can integrate it with Selenium. Fine. Okay. Right.